we're at the Cimarron Correctional Facility in Cushing, and today we're going to visit with Teresa Morris, who is the horticulture uh, instructor, and learn about the vocational horticulture program. Thanks for having us out today, oh, Teresa. Thanks for coming out, Kim. Appreciate it. We appreciate you inviting us. Can you tell us a little bit about this program that you have? Well, the program is a year-long program where the students get to learn all aspects of horticulture a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I teach them in the career tech books um, about half of the time and then the other half of the time they get to experience gardening, um, greenhouse management, and landscape design throughout mm -hmm. that whole year. So it's a really hands-on program. It is a hands-on program. Mm -hmm. um, whatever we learn in the books then I try to um, bring outside the classroom um, to where they can have their hands on something and they can accomplish something, learn how to sow seeds in the greenhouse, um, transplant those seedlings into the garden in the spring, mm -hmm. grow those plants out to uh, maturity and harvest their crops and then they get to eat the fruits of their labor uh, and they get to see their program go full circle. That's certainly a good benefit. How do the students get involved with this program? Well, they have to apply to be on a waiting list, and I've got a pretty long waiting list right now. But one thing that is mandatory is they have a GED. Okay. 85% um, of the inmate population are high school dropouts. Okay. So we provide within the prison system a, a full education program from uh, the level where they cannot read and, mm -hmm. and all the way up to where they can earn their GED. Okay. And then once they've earned their GED, then they can be put on my waiting list, and then I'll go through them and um, kind of screen those worker, those guys out to see which ones would benefit the most from the program. Okay, and how many people do you have? Uh, right now I have 14 students enrolled. I had a few um, just graduate a couple months ago, and we're in the middle of landscape design, and, and I'm not gonna enroll any more students until after we get done with the landscape book. Okay, what are some of the benefits that you see um, in the students who've gone through this program? I've seen um, over the last ten and a half years some lives changed. I've had guys that would come into the program that were very hard-hearted, uh, mm -hmm. with a chip on their shoulder, um, depressed maybe even um, to a point where they weren't happy in their own lives, knowing that guilt was um, just eating them up because um, they're away from their families and not being able to provide for them. And I've seen some of those guys come in and actually complete the program. Um, they've been able to go from seed to sale, so to speak. They can sow the seed, they can cultivate it, they can love it, they can care for it all the way through its maturity and then they can see it bloom and they can see it produce like if it's a tomato and then they can sell that tomato at the farmer's market. Then that money then is generated, it goes back to the community here at Cushing so they can see um, their lives and I've been able to see their own lives change too. Uh, it's a very unique position. How do you, how have you responded to to being no in this doubt position? it's a blessing um, every day that I come in because it's a new world in here every day. Mm -hmm. um, but I have never um, been here a day that I've never been blessed um, by something somebody has said or the changes I can see within a guy's life. And no doubt, what I'd like to see is where uh, a guy, no doubt, he did wrong on the outside. He was, he was convicted for the crime. He comes in and he's paying his time, mm -hmm. but now he's got a change of heart. He's got a family back home, mm -hmm. and I'd like to see him be able to go home, be a better dad, be a better husband, be a better son, be a better citizen, be a better person within his own self. And this program is, is a foundation that he can draw from because he's able to come out here and actually um, learn to like himself and he can work out some of those frustrations that he has and he can be as free as he's ever going to be in prison so, and that yeah. is it's a blessing to me to be able to see the lives being changed within inside this program so it's very therapeutic very therapeutic now is there also some practical side to it no doubt mm -hmm. um, when the when the students complete the program they have a certificate of completion and they have a transcript showing the academic areas and how well they excelled with the ABCDF mm -hmm. um, that they can take that and um, venture into a horticulture endeavor out on the street maybe in a greenhouse somewhere or a nursery somewhere mm -hmm. um, even in um, a truck farm type yep. operation um, they're good at manual labor 
that's mainly what they do. They do a lot of manual labor out here. So they get that experience that, that the industry is needing on, on that side. So mm -hmm. there's lots of opportunities for them, even in landscape design. I've got a couple guys right now that are really have good eyes and they're being able to draw some landscape designs on paper and, mm -hmm. and they're surprising me, a couple of the guys are. So those guys have opportunity even to go out and maybe even further their education in horticulture or landscape design um, or even get a job at a landscape company. So okay. it's really looking good for those guys. Most of the guys that come into prison have no hope, mm -hmm. but when they come into a program like this, um, it gives them some hope so that they can get out and be a productive citizen when they when they get back out on the streets. Okay, and you mentioned a few of the areas. We have uh, the landscape design and the vegetables. We're gonna go ahead and visit with some of the students and look at some of the different areas that they're working in. Okay. Well, the students learn about several different areas of horticulture, and I'm visiting now with Dennis Brown. Dennis, um, each of you has an ornamental bed that you get to take care of, is that right? Yes, ma'am, we sure do. <laughs> you want to tell me a little bit about uh, this bed? Well, this is an ornamental butterfly. We've uh, made a butterfly, and each year a student gets to uh, pick out the plants that he wants to put in the garden and, and try to make it look nice, you know. And, it's, and Miss Morse is a kind of a trial by error teacher. She lets us uh, pretty much pick what we want to put out here. She might suggest some things sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we put it out there and see how it looks. And if, if we like it, then we go with that. And then sometimes you might switch up a little bit. What did you use in, in the butterfly this year? Well, this year we used some licorice for the outside. Okay. And then we used some uh, purple hearts to fill in the middle and some artemisias mm -hmm. for, the, for the eyes and the wings. And uh, we tried some wishbones around the edges but uh, the, they didn't like the sun too well and they was dying off, so I had to take them out. And then I snuck in some rose moss while Miss Morris wasn't looking. And there was a little bit too much contrast, so okay. uh, I took them out too. But I think overall we did a, I did a fairly jo good job, I think. I really like the color contrast that you have. So yeah, as you play around with this, you get to learn a little bit about design and what looks good together. Yes, ma'am. You also learn about the contrast, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what looks good together and what doesn't what look doesn't good together. What doesn't work. Right. Excellent. So can you tell me a little bit about your experience in this program? It's been a real nice, I've, I've really learned a lot. I've never, this is the first time I've had any experience gardening. I'm from Dallas, so I'm a city boy. Okay. And I've, I've never really had any experience with gardening. And I've, and I've learned a lot. And, and like I said, this trial and error, she lets us do things on our own for the most part, you know. But we learn a lot while we're out here, and I really like it. It's a, it's a really good program. It gives you, you know, uh, it gives you something to build on. So it's something I can use when I go back out there. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing this with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Each of the students in the program also has a vegetable plot to take care of, and this is uh, Travis Goodwin. Tell me about your vegetable plot here. Well, I started growing approximately March. These were started in the greenhouse. I got several assorted peppers. Mm -hmm. The tomatoes also were started in the greenhouse. Okay. The black eyed, the peas and the squash, I started out here, the okra. Okay, did you ever garden before you started the never, program? Never, never. No? Do you think this is once something? A, oh, go ahead. Once in a while, I helped my grandma, grandmother. Okay, but. okay. You have a fabulous harvest here. What do you do with your produce once you harvest it? Well, we send it to the Cushing Farmer's Market. Okay. Or we make salsa with it. Okay, so you get to eat some of it and we'll enjoy to, the fruits of your do. labor. Yes. Excellent. Do you think you'll use this skill once you Defi out? Definitely, yeah. with the food prices being the way they are right now, I've, I've, got, to, I've got to have my own garden. I've got two, two more years. And, yeah. I'll be out. I'll definitely gonna have my own garden. I think that's wonderful. A lot of people need to be growing their own food. You know where it comes from. I understand a couple of your squash are going to be going to the fair. I got this, that one over there, okay. and this one I'm going to go to the Payne County Fair tomorrow. Excellent. Those are some nice looking seeds. Not the best harvest, but considering we've been locked down for the past two months, that's all we have. Yeah, and then I 
I understand you lost some of your produce at that oh, point. Oh, I lost. I lost all, a whole row of onions. I lost mm -hmm. a few tomato plants. Mm -hmm. Some of my black eyed peas, my cauliflower, my broccoli. This is still a wonderful looking garden. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Can you tell me a little bit about the program and you know how? Program it is it's real therapeutic. You get to come. You come out of the unit all day. You get away from that madness over there, and you just leave it all behind when you come out here and work in the garden. It's good to work with your hands. Right? Definitely. <laughs> work the earth. Well, thank you for sharing your garden with me. I appreciate it. Thank you. There's also a small greenhouse that the program uses in the classroom and joining me now is John Simpson. Thanks for joining me. How you doing, uh, Kim? You have a special role here. You actually graduated previously. Yes. And can you tell me about what you're doing now? Well, now I'm in the greenhouse management position, looking after the overall functions of the, the greenhouse. And as you know, it requires daily maintenance. Absolutely. But it's, it's definitely a joy to have the opportunity to be out here and, mm -hmm. and get to be doing what I love to do. And as you can see, there's many different varieties of tropical plants and, and things that we're able to uh, propagate, we're able to take care of and, so and basically take care of. The students learn, use a lot of this material to learn different types of propagation. Absolutely. The division, separation, uh, propagating vegetable crops out in the out in the gardens. So you'll start some of those in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, start those in January and February. Get our get our cold crops ready, and, and uh, the students get to choose what kind of varieties they want out in their gardens. But the main thing in here is everybody's assigned a bench, mm -hmm. and the plant material that's on their bench they're re required to take care of and, and learn something about each individual plant. Okay, learn and about different species and also what their requirements are, how to care for them. Exactly. Excellent. Now in managing the greenhouse, do you also take care of the heating and cooling systems? Yeah, yeah, we have the evaporative cooling system that requires uh, filter cleaning and, and uh, monthly upkeep, also the, the heating and and the temperature uh, issues, make sure everything's operational, mm -hmm. functional. Uh, Certainly some really good skills to learn. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, there's quite a lot of house plants in here and I understand that some of these are also destined to visit the fair soon. Yeah, we're getting ready for the Payne County Fair. We, we really do well every year and we've got some hanging baskets going and, and some other uh, varieties of annuals and uh, of course the produce, produce entries. Yeah. So guys, you know, guys have something to work for out here, look forward to, and it's, it's a real joy to be out here and involved. And you were sharing with me some of your plans to use what you've learned here in the future as well. Yeah, like I said, this is what I love to do. My parents in Oklahoma City, they They've allotted me about two and a half acres to, to pursue that, that dream, as it were. So I look forward to doing that when I get released. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for uh, sharing this with us. Well, I thank you, Kim. Well, I just met with one of the graduates of your program. I understand a handful of students get to come back and help continue helping with the program? Yeah, once they um, graduate the program, they can then be uh, put on another waiting list to come back and help me manage mm -hmm. uh, the garden areas. Uh, John takes helps me manage the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. I've got one um, graduate that helps me manage the gardens. I've got one that helps me to uh, manage the landscape out on the main compound. Mm -hmm. um, I've got several positions um, available for guys to come back in increase their knowledge and those skills and hone in on those fundamental skills that they learned while they were in the program and master them even further on in the other jobs. Okay, and these students have their own gardens that they tend? Yes, they, they attend um, the biggest part of these gardens right through here. Mm -hmm. um, 
after they've completed all of their mandatory work as far as what needs to happen inside their specific work area, then they're uh, allowed to come out here or they want to come out here. Uh -huh. And the produce that they um, take care of here, we give to homeless shelters. Um, we give it to the food kitchens, we give it to any benevolent organization that's mm -hmm. doing a food drive sometimes in the fall for Thanksgiving baskets. Um, we send most of this to the farmer's market. Okay. Um, Cushing has a farmer's market every Thursday afternoon and when we have good enough quality produce then I'll take what they donate and then I'll sell it to the community and then all that money then that is generated to the sale of that prison produce then is donated back to the downtown Main Street mm -hmm. program at Cushing where we help to revitalize downtown and help with uh, specifically the pocket park that we built last last year for the centennial. Wonderful and another program that um, you are all involved with is the fair. The Payne County Fair yeah. which actually tomorrow is entry day Okay. so we're looking forward to that. The guys are really encouraged all year to to take care of their produce in the garden and their green in their greenhouse crops too as far as hanging baskets or potted plants okay and so yeah i will be taking some of their um, entries tomorrow and then later on in the week on thursday um, to be judged with all the other people within Payne County in the open class and they really look forward to it. And I've seen quite a few uh, blue ribbons hanging up inside. Yes, we've <laughs> been at the Payne County Fair exhibiting now for, this will be our ninth year I guess, and uh, we have never come back with less than a reserve um, champion on something. Um, and no doubt we always look forward to it. We're not guaranteed anything, yeah. but we'll just see how the judge works it this week. I imagine that goes a long way uh, toward uh, encouraging Oh yes everyone. it does and the ribbons are up on the wall for everybody to see so the classes later on down the line will actually be able to see those ribbons and, and have some inspiration hoping that maybe they'll get a ribbon when their fair time comes. Well this is certainly a wonderful program and I, I like learning how there's the interaction with the community and you're giving back to the community. I really appreciate that you've shared this with us today. Yeah, most of the guys uh, well, all of the guys have failed in social skills somewhere down the line because they, they're in prison. So society has ostracized them basically, so now they live here. But what I want to do is give back to society by giving them a, a man that um, wants to be a part of society again, that's been trained, that's been educated, has a skill, uh, and has that desire within those, in his own heart to be able to go out and be productive again. Well, thank you, Teresa, so much for having us here today. You are more than welcome, and thank you for coming. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge both classic and contemporary.